Can we? We're trying something new this week, by the way. Format's changing. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how much I'm gonna keep, but I thought it'd be fun, so here I am. Hello. <clears throat> Can we talk about this? Riot has been doing everything in their power to bring the FUN back in League of Legends. <laughs> and it's kind of working. I myself have been having a lot of fun strategizing with the new runes, trying the new crit items, and of course, dealing with enough cheese to send somebody with lactose intolerance straight into the afterlife. It really feels like the stage we call a meta is ever expanding, allowing more and more characters a chance to shine under the right circumstances. Was that the line? But I'll admit, this meta may be the craziest meta we've ever seen in League history. Taking the game's playable roster from Street Fighter 2 to Smash Brothers Ultimate. Everyone is here, except for Poppy and Waluigi. <laughs> But when Mordekaiser's considered the third best ADC in the meta, can we really consider that a W? The game has been altered a lot. Right? when I asked you to change, I meant maybe a different shirt or some new shoes. You deadass went from Sarah to Tyrese. And as fun as it is, staring at two frames of professional play was enough to make me realize that the pro scene has now become the equivalent of competitive Candyland. What's in the deck? You may get a purple space, or you might get a Master Yi that went 20 and 4 early because he has a Taric mid. And obviously there's gonna be changes down the line that are gonna take Mordekaiser's bucket ass back to the discount bin, but for now, reveling in the madness is kinda great. It seems every role can have most classes, and that's awesome. Tops can be bruisers or tanks, mids can be supports, assassins, Assassins or control mages. And jungle... Jungle is a funky fiesta. There's assassins, there's tanks, there's bruisers, and I think Talia just moved in, and tensions are at an all-time high, but I digress. It's 2018, and it's about time we start seeing some goddamn diversity around these parts. <laughs> This is normally the part where I segue and talk about how a champion is strong and perfectly fitting in certain situations, but uh, I, I can't. Pike is the first ever AD support in League of Legends and he's actually rewarded for playing greedy. Which in and of itself has a ton of pros and cons. A lot of cons. A lot of cons. Whether it be because of his inability to build health, his need for AD since all five of his abilities scale off of it, or the fact that his only mobility spell doubles as his best CC, Pike needs to get ahead. And being the lowest win rate jungler and the second lowest win rate support, believe me when I say... I'm gonna turn around for this. Hold on, give me a second, I got this. That shit ain't happening. <laughs> Pike's passive is to heal a percentage of the damage he's taken by enemy champions when he's out of vision. His heal skills off of AD, so rushing damage will not only make it easier to execute a target, but it'll also keep him healthy when he misses all of his goddamn skill shots. And it has to flash out because he fucking sucks. His passive serves as a way to keep himself healthy while also telling your ADC to go fuck himself because he has to buy pots. He also can't build max health and instead all of his health items will be converted to a decent amount of AD, but it's slightly less cost efficient than building just AD in the first place. Which forces him to either build pseudo tank, which is a bunch of resistances sitting on base health, or being a snowball assassin, but he never actually gets to CS, meaning he'll never be able to hang out with the big boy. Pike's Q is the worst hook in League of Legends. While Thresh stuns you for 1.5 seconds and leads to a CC combo, Blitzcrank stuns you for one second and uppercuts the shit out of you, and Nautilus is kind of a uh, Nautilus. Pike's pool is very predictable and uh, shit. That's another sink. If you hold Pike's Q for 0.5 seconds, it becomes a pool that snags you for a fixed distance and slows you for 90% for one second, which is... Okay. You can also tap it to do an AoE stab move that hurts more, but to be honest, what's even the point, man? If Blitz grabs you, you're boned. If Thresh grabs you, preguntale adios para ayuda. But if Pike grabs you, you are... You're, you're, you're minorly inconvenienced. Like stubbing your toe, or, or wearing a turtleneck that's a little too tight. This paired with the fact that him needing to charge it makes it absurdly predictable, if an enemy gets caught by this, they deserve the disjointed CC combo that comes after. Pike's W is the most back-assed, contradictory shit I have ever heard in my goddamn life. Pike becomes camouflaged for the next five seconds and gains an ass ton of decaying move speed. Which sounds like it may be good, except for two things. One, you can't use any abilities while in this or it'll break the stealth, meaning if you're trying to charge your hook, it's gonna make your squishy ass a target. Bitch. <laughs> Two, enemies are notified when you're nearby, not only by a loud ass noise, but by sharks. I, 
I don't get it. What good is being unseen by the naked eye if the person's stealth is screaming at you and yelling, I'm invisible. I mean, it's good for roaming, but you already don't have an ally heal making your poor, poor ADC feel like a gold mine. Because he's giving a bunch of gold to the enemy team, and he's also getting the shaft. <laughs> Pike's E is yet another very confusing ability. He dashes a short distance, and then after a second of delay, his after image catches up to him, stunning everyone in its path. His stun is actually 1.5 seconds long, which isn't that bad, but the fact that he has to use his only mobility spell as a way to engage kinda leaves him in a weird position. Coming from behind, dashing through enemies, and then pulling the stun sap back into your team kinda makes it viable, but dashing into enemies is almost always a no-go late game. Being down your only mobility spell in a group of raging bulls is a character who literally cannot build health blows ass. I mean, you could technically build a GA, but they're just gonna wait for you and eat that ass again. Pike's ultimate is probably his only saving grace. Pike lands in an X-shaped area, executing enemies under a certain threshold of health. If an enemy dies within the X of this ability, then it gives the last ally who helped you out full kill gold, which doubles kill gold efficiency, but at the same time resets the ability is a little confusing. There are three things to keep in mind here. One, this is a skill shot that deals AoE damage, so getting resets on a group of people that are holding hands is gonna chunk them pretty hard. And three, though this is technically doubling kill gold, just remember that half of the gold is going to Pike, which which isn't saying much. Pike is in no way, shape, or form a good support right now, but he is easily one of the funnest characters to play. His cooldowns are way too long to make his jungle clear viable, and his support presence is negated by almost every single lane matchup. And even if they do slip up, almost every single support is gonna be better than him in the late game. Whether it be because they have a better engage, or because they could heal something other than themselves, Pike is almost always the bad choice. But it's okay, because he's fun, and sometimes the bad choice is the fun one. But for the very, very few games that Pike can actually become a monster in the late game, my god, is his ult satisfying. In short, going against a fed Pike is a lot like dating Taylor Swift. You gotta watch out for exes. <laughs> I'm so drunk. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's episode of Can We Talk About This? If there's something else you want to talk about, leave it in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get to it. Also, if you want to support me, be sure to check out the stream, because I'm streaming right now, and, and I would love to see your beautiful face. So go over there and say hello to me so I can give you a, a, a big sloppy kiss. Also, I hope you enjoyed the new format. I know there's still a lot of kinks to iron out, but on this channel, we know better than the king shame. Okay. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Before I go, do you guys want to hear me with a reverb? <clears throat> oh!